What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2008 Mercedes-Benz W211 E63 AMG. Today on the W211 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your belts, tensioners, and pulleys. This DIY is going to be applicable to all M156 vehicles. The kit in front of me is available on fcpo.com and it comes with everything you need to do this job. We have a new belt, a new tensioner, idler pulleys, and some hardware as well. Now typically your belt's going to last you anywhere from 50 to 100,000 miles. More than likely, the units in front of it that they ride on are gonna go before the belt does. Uh, an easy thing to tell is simply by listening. If you have some weird squeaking coming from the engine at idle or when you're driving or on startup, more than likely one of these units have gone bad. Another thing you can do is visually inspect. You can look at your belt. If you see any cracking or tearing on it, then you know it's absolutely time to replace it. And if you're not looking to replace the whole kit at once, but you may wanna do just one of the items that are on the table in front of me, what you can do is release the tension on the tensioner, remove the belt, and you can spin each component individually to see if you can find the source of your sound. But with that being said, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this DIY. For this job, we're gonna be using an electric ratchet just to speed up the removal and install of hardware. We have a 3 h drive torque wrench as well as a ratchet. We have an E12, a T50, a T45, a T30, a 10 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter socket, a small extension, some pliers to remove some plastic rivets, and a paint pen. Now we know what we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. We're gonna start by getting some things out of our way up here, starting with this beauty cover. Release it on either end of the air box by lifting up and pushing the tabs up that hold it into place. Just to kind of get it started. And you can just pull this off, set it to the side. Next, we're gonna work on removing the fan shroud so we have more than enough room to work with. To start, we're gonna peel up this weather stripping seal. Same thing, just rest it back. We don't have to take the whole thing off. You have some rivets that you wanna remove. There's a total of four traditionally, one on this seal, one on the other seal, and then usually you have two down here that hold some more weather stripping. These are obviously missing, so we'll just work on removing these two. Next, we have a total of seven 10 millimeter bolts to remove. We have three on either end, and then we have one in the center by the hood latch. We have two T30s to remove, and now we should be able to lift this up gently and pull it off and set it to the side. You wanna make sure when you reinstall this later that both of these rubber grommets are secured and they lock back on top of your radiator. That's what kind of keeps everything in place from moving and dancing around. So we'll set this to the side and then we'll continue on the fan shroud removal. Next, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our electrical connector that leads down to our electric fan. Simply push on either tab and pull the connector back. You can tuck that behind the ducting over here. Just kind of leave it out of the way. Next, we have a metal U-clip one on either end of the radiator and fan shroud that hold these two units together. You can use a small flathead screwdriver and just work them up, pry it off. This is what that clip looks like. Flat end on the radiator side, hooked end on the fan shroud side. Now we have our electrical harness undone and our two metal clips removed. All that we have left to do before we pull this up is release the two coolant lines that are clipped into the bottom of the shroud. So let's take a peek underneath and we'll work on freeing those up. All right, underneath the fan shroud, we have a coolant line to unclip from the shroud. So let's go ahead and do that. On the passenger side bank, it's on the lower right corner. And heading over to the driver's side. Still can't, well, it popped out with the other one, but Traditionally, it is held in like that. This pops right out. And then we have one more clip that hugs the coolant line to the shroud. Just break this tab open, or free it open, I should say, using a flathead screwdriver. There we go. With 
those three connections freed up, now we can head back up top and pull the shroud out. Ours is a little broken here, but this should be traditionally even all the way across. The goal is to kind of push away from the radiator while you pull up. The key here is to gently push the radiator hose over to the side so you can clear this nub right here. Once that one's freed up, the whole shroud will come up. Now that we have our fan shroud out, we can go ahead and get to our belt tensioner and release the tension so we can pull our old belt off. To do that, we're going to need a 17 millimeter socket. You can also fit a 16 on there, but it's a tight fit, so I recommend a 17 on your ratchet. We'll go ahead and release the tension from the tensioner, and then we'll pull our whole belt off. All right, we're going to take our 17 and get it on our tensioner. Release the tension and remove the belt. And we can just go ahead and pull the whole belt out. Helps to take a picture before you do this in case you're unsure of the way it goes on. That's what we did at first, so that way we can reference the photo and then reinstall our new belt, no problem. Now with our old belt off, we're just gonna focus on the first three tensioners first, or I'll say the grooved pulley and the two small idler pulleys, and then we'll get to the actual tensioner down below. So to start, we'll take our E12 on our ratchet. We can probably use the electric ratchet for this one, and we'll get ready to zap it off. And we'll just go ahead and install our new one. And we'll just do the same thing for all of them as we remove them. And start your new one by hand. We'll snug it up with the electric ratchet first. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque it. And the grooved pulley gets torqued down to 30 Newton meters. Again, E12, 30 Newton meters. Beautiful. I'm gonna hit it with the paint mark just so that we remember that we torqued it. All right, now we're tackling the idler pulley underneath the power station reservoir next to the thermostat. T50 on there, we'll break that free. Go ahead and pull that out. Now we can go ahead and take our new idler pulley and swap that one over. Never hurts to compare them. You can see this one almost looks original and this one's nice and fresh. Just a note for those of you out there that may be looking at this for the first time. Maybe you're replacing your water pump be sure to check the link in the description below. We have a DIY on the water pump, but if you're dealing with a new pump, you may notice that those bolts for those pulleys don't typically come tapped from Mercedes. The bolts are self-tapping, they are tapered, so they will tap the holes for you. So just keep that in mind, should you run into that. We're gonna go ahead and snug it down with the electric ratchet, T50, and then we're gonna torque that one down to 20 Newton meters. You already know the drill, my good people. It's for our own sake. Sticking with the T50, we're gonna work down to the idler pulley beneath our thermostat. Once we take out the idler underneath the thermostat housing, we're gonna to wanna to reuse the hardware from it. So we're gonna to wanna to pull the old back spacer off, slip it on the back of our new idler pulley. There, it's the same size, it's perfectly symmetrical. You can install it either way. Then we can take our new bolt, we'll be reusing that as well, and we'll go ahead and get it started by hand. Then we'll just snug it up with the electric ratchet, and then we'll torque it down to 20 Newton meters. And we'll mark it. With those three situated, all we have left is our tensioner assembly. So for that, we're gonna need our 17 once more and our T45, so let's get to it. The trick here is gonna be to release the tension on the tensioner with the 17 and using our T45 on the electric ratchet we're going to zap out that bottom bolt first then we'll release the tensioner and then the top bolt is easily accessible without tensioning it up so it's a lot of tensioning let's go ahead and get started with that we got our 17 I'm going to go ahead and release tension as if we were removing the belt we'll squeeze our T45 down there use my arm as my lever, make sure it's in the reverse mode. Always helps. And we can do the top one, and then we can pull the tensioner out. Here's our old unit. We're gonna wanna reuse both of the T45s once more. What's great about the new one is that it comes pre-tensioned, if you will, so you can easily install the hardware without having to do an acrobatic act. Now, 
with that being said, let's just say you're reinstalling a used tensioner and you're not installing a new unit. This pin's not gonna be there. You're gonna wanna feed it in by hand with the lower bolt kind of started already. Once you get that one in there, you can kind of get it in all the way by your by finger. And then it'll just rotate like this. You can get the top bolt easily. And then you can do the same acrobatic that there. And you can detension the tensioner, torque everything down. You get the drill, my good people. But for now, let's go ahead and install this one. Get that one loosely started. Then we'll start the bottom bolts. All right, we're gonna snug the bolts down with our electric ratchet, and then we're gonna torque both of those down to 20 Newton meters. That one's there. And that one is torqued. We'll paint mark both of those beautiful bolts. While we have that pre-tensioned from the quote unquote factory, we can go ahead and install our new belt. So let's do that. I like to start on the bottom right corner or driver's side corner, if you will, and then work my way over and then usually slip it on the groove pulley at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, we have our belt 99% of the way on. We're gonna go ahead and work on getting that pin out as well as releasing the bit, last bit of tension if we need to, to get the belt fully seated. There we go, pull that pin out, and voila baby, belt is in. With that, let's go ahead and button up this DIY by reinstalling our fan shroud and going from there. Just be mindful of that radiator hose on your right side bank. You wanna massage it a little bit to the side to get this fan shroud in if it gets in your way. All right, as you bring the fan shroud down, you wanna make sure you lock it into those two bottom tabs that we showed you earlier underneath the car. We'll point them out again when we get underneath to resecure the belly splash shield as well as the cooling hose that runs along the shroud. All right, my good people, back underneath the W211, we're gonna make sure our fan shroud is aligned in place. And then we're gonna reclip in that coolant line that runs through the shroud, so let's do that. So you can see our fan shroud is situated back in the radiator on the uh, clip that holds it into place. So that's great. And we'll go ahead and seat our coolant line back into the shroud while we're over here. Simply pop it back into place. So you can see our fan shroud situated on the driver's side bank as well. We have that coolant line up top that we need to reclip. We use a screwdriver to just swing that clip around so we can get that around the hose and clip it back into itself. So again, it sits above the connector for the fan. I'm just gonna reach up there for a moment and clip it closed and then I'll show you what that looks like once again. Also gonna pop our line back here in place. So it's not fighting us up top. There we go. Now we can head back up top and reinstall our radiator support. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, back up top, we're gonna work on securing our fan shroud to the radiator, and then our radiator support can go back in. Starting with either end of the fan shroud, we have two metal body clips that we removed earlier. Now would be the time to reinstall those. And again, the back side of the clip is gonna be facing the front of the vehicle, and then the curved end will be facing the engine, so. Pretty straightforward, they really only go in one way. There's one. There's two. While we have all the room to work with, we'll reconnect our electrical connector for the fan. There we go. When you reinstall the radiator support, you wanna make sure your hood latch release cable is running outside of the channeled areas on the radiator so that you don't accidentally pinch the cable. And underneath the support itself, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have these red isolating rubber boots or rubber blocks that kind of help keep that in place as well as help with vibration. So you want to make sure those two key back into your radiator as well. Beautiful. Now we're going to go ahead and hand start the seven 10 millimeter bolts and our two T30s. And our two T30s, then we're gonna go ahead and torque all of these down to 10 Newton meters. Not a whole lot. You could just tighten them by hand, but we have the torque wrench out still, so let's go ahead and torque them down properly. We'll swap over to our T30 bit. 
Now we can take our weather stripping from earlier and tuck this back over the top here, along with these pesky rivets. Then we can reinstall our weather stripping back in place. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our beauty cover. For the beauty cover, just like we removed it, you wanna make sure the six tabs are aligned, two on each air box, and then you have two up front here, one on the reservoir and one on the reservoir bracket. And there you have it, my good people. Another DIY in the books. Overall, a really straightforward job doing the Serpentine Bell Kit on the W211. The M56 is fairly easy to work on up front. I highly recommend you remove the fan shroud assembly and the radiator support just to give yourself a little bit more breathing room. But with that being said, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If any questions or comments on what we did today or the specific W211 content you want to see, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.